I was laying in bed last night talking to my ex-wife sister. I said, yeah, this crowd isn't too bright, is it? You, you get all the pure. Oh, another reason I say shit is because I have a St. Bernard dog weighs 240 pounds. He does not doo-doo. <laughs> you cannot give a dog 10 cans of Alpo and expect him to doo-doo. <laughs> See, St. Bernard's shit. <laughs> That's why you keep him in the yard. Because if you had him in the house, they shit and cover up the furniture. <laughs> My neighbor called the police. See, I got a yard full of shit. <laughs> they called the police and told them I was growing shit. <laughs> they came out to the house and said, where's that shit you're growing? I said, out in the yard, smoke your 12. For you. Oh, I, I give my children a slogan to carry them over for the week. Mom's slogan this week is quit it if you can't do nothing with it. <laughs> if you can do something with it, get it. trouble. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. <laughs> I was married to one old man and he died. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, mom got out of a job because it, it, it's the truth. I've been accused of liking young men and I've got a reason and I'm guilty. <laughs> but mom got broke and the winter time coming on didn't have no money, and I married another old man. <laughs> Older than the other one. Old. Older than his birthday. That's right. Did you see The Exorcist? Yeah. Uh... See, the movie would have been over for me. If I'd have been in the movie, it would have been over if I'd have walked in the house and heard, Would have been it. <laughs> Wouldn't have had to go no further. <laughs> right, with all the extras? No, no, no. Brothers exercise the devil every day, though, with two words. Be cool. Because <laughs> right? the movie would have been over, right, if it had been a black man in the movie, because you don't be vomiting on no brother's clothes. <laughs> right, the brother walking, what is this smell? Up. What's wrong with you, girl? Say, what the hell's wrong with you? What put you down in my suit, chump? Possess nothing? I whoop her in the devil's. I messed up their clothes and put the cross back on the wall. Entertainers whose path to fame included our beloved Apollo. Their accomplishments have forever altered the American cultural landscape, and their influence continues to inspire and inform the young artists who grace the Apollo stage today. Stage is, because we have a couple. So today is an especially significant moment in the Apollo and the Walk of Fame's story, since it marks the first time we are inducting non-musical artists into the Walk of Fame. So today, we're honoring three comedians, Richard Pryor, Jackie Moms Mabley, and Red Fox, who have been integral to the Apollo's impact on the development of American popular culture. The legends were made here. I made some through the brand that I work with. Now, Bob Sumner and the Apollo together, we get ready to make some beautiful, beautiful magic here. And I just want to... You're right. Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seriously, thank you for um, having us here. We're so proud. 
to be the legacy of my father. Um, my father started comedy in the early 60s when I was born and he was married to my mother. My mother was uh, the only wife he had prior to him uh, becoming a comic. So he left Peoria to come to New York to make it big. And then he found a white girl. And they asked us, they asked us when we came here, like, what could represent our dad? And I said, you have any white women hookers and cocaine? But on the strength, your boy. <laughs> Yo, give it up for yourselves. I'm your so new host. Harlem, Bronx, New York City. Get ready. It's getting ready to be an explosion right here. Give it up for Bob Sumner, the Apollo, for letting us be here and bringing this great. People take it to the next level in New York City. You know that, right? You know that. You know when I first moved here, I moved to Brooklyn. You know somebody bust the back windows out of my car and stole a Snapple and some cheeses off the back seat? I can't make that up if I wanted to, okay? I wasn't even mad. I just kept thinking to myself, what would have happened to my car if I would have had some Popeyes on the back seat? You know? I say, I gotta move from here. My family is not from the hood, okay? We are from the high class, low income part of town. I'm not used to this nonsense. You know, we can all do comedy living in New York, too, then. You know that, right? We can all do comedy, because funny stuff happened, I don't even gotta write no jokes about it. Tell you what happened to me two days ago. I get off the train. This huge guy get behind me. He walking real fast. I'm walking real fast because it's two o'clock in the morning. It's late, you know? Then all of a sudden he stopped walking behind me. But you know, you look back to make sure it's safe. I look back and he was like, hey, you, hey. I was 
like, now this got to be the epitome of fat right here, okay? He's so fat, he want me to come here so he can attack me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, next you're gonna need my help to rape me too, I guess. Everybody swears I'm a cop. So you know what, one day I wanted to put it to the test. I had to do a show in Newark, and you know, Newark is the hood. For some reason, I took my dad to the show. We get to the club, there's two abandoned houses on each side, there's three drug dealers selling drugs in front of the club. My dad looks at me, he's like, Papi, I'm not going in there. I said, Dad, don't worry, I got this. I stop and I start staring at him. And as I'm looking at him, one of them sees me, taps his boy. Now two of them staring at me, I went. They tapped the other boy, all three of them staring at me, I went. He's got a Yankee hat on, blue jeans, hoodie. Yo, they scattered. They were like, oh shit. Five more, he's here. I go into the club, right? As I'm performing, the same three drug dealers come back into the club. Now I'm on stage shitting in my pants. I'm like, oh, Babalu, you got some explaining to do. After I get off stage, the biggest one comes up to me and says, yo, son. Yo, you got it, yo. We thought you was 5 0, man. That was good. <laughs> yo, it was cool. My dad bought a bag from them. We were hanging all night. It was awesome. Oh, I had a blast. Oh, and doing this comedy thing is fun, man. You get to travel. I just actually did for the first time a cruise. How many people here have been on a cruise before? Make some noise. Okay. I'm not talking about the ferry, okay? I'm not talking about the circle line. I'm not talking about that shit you wear all white and you leave off the FDR on 23rd Street and you come back four fucking hours later. Okay, just because it says cruise on a flyer doesn't mean it's a really a fucking cruise, okay? I went on Norwegian Cruise Line, awesome. They called me up, they were like, yo, we think you're hilarious, we want you to work our cruise. It's a seven day cruise from New York to the Bahamas. You get free amenities, free jet skis, free liquor, you can bring somebody. And as they're telling me all this shit I can get for free, all I kept thinking in my head was, how the fuck am I gonna sneak weed on this fucking boat? <laughs> And I had a blast, man. It was so much fun. The first four days were really cool. All the shows, the nightclub and everything. But then our first stop was Coco man, Beach. I knew, I knew this was going to be an outstanding night. That's why I wore my best shirt for you. <laughs> yeah, this is my throwback right here. Man, it ain't a throwback because it's old school. It's a throwback because I'm going to wear it today and throw it back on tomorrow. <laughs> I don't change my outfits, I change the places I go. Yeah. I wasn't here yesterday. Yeah, Y'all laughing, I'm dead serious. These are today's clothes for tomorrow's people. Well, if I happen to see any of y'all tomorrow, y'all see with my same tan polo, I don't care. I'm gonna be like, the fuck you doing violent? You know what I mean? Because laughter is medicine for your soul. You know what I mean? When you laugh and you feel good inside, you ain't thinking about your problems. And one thing everybody in this whole building got common is we all got problems. You know, ain't nobody sitting up in here like, I ain't worried about nothing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> but this is how you look at your problems. Whatever you're going through in your life, look at it like this, it could be worse. You're lucky to be sitting there with the problems you got. You're lucky to be sitting there, period. You're lucky to be born. You're lucky to be born human. You could have been born something else. Think about that for a second. God ain't had to make you human, you know what I mean? Like, bro, y'all got the nice band, y'all play good music. God ain't had to make you a musician, bro. He could've, could've made you a pumpkin or something. <laughs>
pits. Pass me another me. Pass me another me. That's what Pim say. <laughs> but we all got problems, ladies and gentlemen. I got major problems in my life. I don't let that stop me from coming to perform for y'all. My daughter, 13 years old, just got her menstrual cycle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even got a joke about that. I just need to tell somebody. The only thing the internet tell me is that her hormones about to start going crazy. Her hormones. Let me tell y'all something. I don't want my daughter doing nothing with the word whore or moan in it. Period. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Marcy Brandon. Thank you very much. Working with their literary agents and everything like that, uh, called Bigly Island Associates, working with them.